Good afternoon, Redeemer family, and everybody joining us on the internet around the world. Our devotion for this afternoon is based on our gospel reading for Sunday. Our gospel reading for Sunday is God, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. Luke, chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. Now Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation. And he said to them, Which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has arrived on a journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, Do not bother me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot give, get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, yet because of his impudence, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. And I tell you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and though the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks it will be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or, if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? <clears throat> you know, this passage is uh, completely about prayer. And as we listen to Jesus uh, helping us to understand the nature of prayer, we not only see him teaching his disciples how to pray, but teaching his disciples also how God responds to our prayers. And I think that's even more important than how to pray. You know, how to pray is, is important, but knowing how God answers us, knowing that he answers us, and, and what his motivation is in answering us, I think is even more uh, important for us to learn. Because in, uh, after he gives us this, he gives us two things that tell us about God's nature in answering prayer. The first starts at verse 5. And he said to them, Which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, give me three loaves, for a friend of mine has arrived on a journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, Do not bother me. The door is now shut. My children are with me in bed. I cannot give up, get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him anything, because he is his friend, yet because of his impudence, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. See, and that is the key. You know, we can't think that it's, we can trust in God's uh, love and friendship and then just wait on him to give us what we need without asking. You know, God has given us prayer not only as a command, but also and especially as a privilege because he wants us to approach him because he wants us to draw near to him. And so that word impudence, I, I believe it, it's better understood as boldness, that we're bold enough to come, bold enough to come at any time, bold enough to come at any hour, bold enough to ask, and not being afraid. See, the friendship we have with God makes us not being afraid to approach him, but that boldness helps us not to be afraid to ask, not to be afraid to push God for what we really need, for what we're really asking. And I want us to see that, you know, and I used in my, my sermon this Sunday the example that Martin Luther shows us as he gives us the definition of the meaning of the introduction of the Lord's Prayer. Because he uses in that introduction 
with all boldness and confidence we may ask him as dear children ask their dear father. And that's what we need to remember here. See, God wants us to be bold in our prayers, not being afraid, not being timid to approach him, timid to ask, timid to hold him to his word, hold him to his promises, hold him to his character. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to remember him as he is and be bold enough, courageous enough to approach him without fear. But the other thing that Jesus teaches of us about God answering prayer comes in the next section. And notice what it's, well, the last section here. It says, What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will give him, instead of a fish, give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? You know, the point that he's making here is, when we ask for something, and we're asking for something that's good for us, God's not going to give us something bad instead. God's not going to be, you know, like a, an evil genie in a bottle that, you know, wants us to ask and then, you know, create all kinds of havoc in our lives when we don't get what we want. No, God is promising his absolute goodness. See, that's the nature of God. He is absolutely good, and therefore he will only provide us that which is good. And then also the reminder that even if we ask God for something that's bad, he's not going to give us something that's going to be bad for us. Instead, he will turn that into something that is good for us. Does that mean we're never going to face pain? We're never going to face suffering? We're never going to face hardship? No. Some of those things come because uh, they're consequences of our own sins. But he will give us what we need to face those things, to be strengthened, to be comforted, to walk and knowing that he will give us exactly what we need and exactly how we need it. And that's how we need to see our God here. We need to see his love. We need to see his mercy. We need to see his grace. But we also need to see his goodness. His goodness gives us his very best. His goodness gave us Jesus and his righteous perfection. His goodness gave him to die in our place. His goodness gave us a resurrected Savior to give us everlasting life. His goodness will always give us his very best. In Jesus' name, amen. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you that Jesus taught us how to pray in instituting the Lord's Prayer, but we also praise and thank you that he taught us how to know and view your responses, to recognize that you call us to be bold in prayer, not being afraid to approach you, not being afraid to hold you to your word and your promises, but at the same time, knowing that you are always good and you will only give us that which is good for us, never anything that will be harmful to us. Strengthen in our faith to be bold and confident in our prayer life and to trust in your love, your grace, your mercy, and your goodness for the answers that give us your very best as they did in Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed Thursday and a blessed weekend. Uh, Thursday is the last devotion for this week, and uh, we'll see you again on Monday, um, or I should say we'll see you on Sunday as uh, we stream our worship service also. Um, but we'll see you again on Monday for the next devotion uh, starting for next week. Have a beautiful weekend, and may the Lord be with you through it. <music>